Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find rows and rows of monitors, screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers, even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labelled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After it kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself? Is that what you wanted? Control? Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go, turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Now, 
This is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead. Play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom and escape. I didn't have to do that. I've run this story many times and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever and then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. But you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Oh, I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. There we go. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Except for one thing there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then he lets go. He surrenders. And he dies. 30 seconds, Stanley. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you dying. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style, would it? Instead, you'll perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until the moment I say happily ever after.